on a dare from the teenagers in our lives. I have teenage daughters, Kemi has teenage students. And uh, we had had an idea over lunch and I came home and I said, we're gonna write a book. And they were like, yeah, all right. I said, no, no, we're, we're actually going to write a book. And they were like, yeah, yeah, you never finish anything. And I said, oh, it's on. And it was literally like that. We gave them the first maybe 25 pages and, um, and they were like, eh. I said, what'd you think? And they go, eh. what happens next? So then we knew we had them, those sly dogs. And um, they would literally ask us for pages every day. And they would come home from school and pester us and be like, what have you got? What have you got? And I'll be like, well, I don't have an email from Cami. I have what I have. And they're like, no, no, I got to see it. What do you have? What do you have? And then uh, we knew it was going well when I got a text at about three in the morning from a girl named Joyce, who I didn't even know, who said, I only have up to page 146. I need more pages. Yeah, it's actually a very bloody process. When we discuss it with other writers, they pass out or start shrieking. But we will hand a draft back and forth, just striking through, cutting, chopping, deleting. There's no like note taking or asking if it would be okay to change something. It is like a super bloody um, Jedi, you know, hack and slash drafting process. Like maybe Margie says, I'm gonna work on chapter one and I say, I'll work on chapter two. And then when we're both done with our section, we actually just trade and write. And that's what she was talking about. We write over each other's work. Like literally, I'll just say, oh, I don't really like, you know, that paragraph. And I'll just highlight it and hit delete. And I don't call her up and we don't conference about it. Sometimes a sentence will have two of my words and three of her words. It's, it's so, that's, and for me, that's what's really fun because when I get it back again it's all as a reader it's almost like I get to read a new book every time I get it back the, there is of course a story that Cammy will deny but basically um, the famous story is Cammy getting up the nerve to call me in a uncharacteristically conflict oriented we fight like sisters but never about the book and she's like Marg I hate this it's got to go it's the worst thing in the history of the world and I'm like, well, okay, what, what are we talking about? Tell me a page number. And she says it, and I'm like, go ahead and cut it. You wrote it. And this universe was real to us. I mean, we knew exactly what kind of music the characters liked, you know, what kind of sneakers they wore, what their favorite soda was. Like, they're, they had become real people to us. So it's almost as if their own personalities, once we constructed those personalities, they went where they wanted. Like, you, you can't make Link do something he wouldn't naturally do once you've kind of created that character, and that's yeah. what happened. We would talk about them together as like, if they were real people. Like, Marky would say, okay, well, you know, does Link like pizza? What kind of music does he like? What, you know, what color, you know, jeans would Lena have on? How does she dress? Where would she shop? Where would she not shop? You know, like, is she home stitching up her clothes? What does her bedroom look like? So we would literally t like brainstorm so that they seemed completely real to us because then at that point, anybody can write them. You know what I mean? You could write them. It would be like you meeting someone and you know becoming friends with them and being able to predict what they're gonna do. Own it, you know, own what you're, you're willing to feel, let it all be painful and difficult, say all the hard things, you know, just get it out on the page. Get a friend. I think you need a critique partner. We were critique partners before we were writing partners. And you, you need just one person you trust. And then you use Twitter and the online universe. And there are actually so many people in the industry willing to talk to you. Writers have, you know, access they've never had before. My best writing advice was given to me by Clive Barker who is, you know, his Abrap books are genius for me. And he said that he actually got it from his mentor, Ray Bradbury. He said he reads everything that he writes out loud. So when he's done writing, he, he reads the chapters out loud. And I find that when I do that, I can actually hear what, what doesn't ring true, what sounds forced or false, or doesn't even sound like your character's voice. And so I read everything that I write out loud, we both do. I think it's also, for us, it was very easy if you know who you're writing for. If you 
even if it's you know not necessarily six teenagers but if you can imagine you know one person you're writing for if it's that critique par partner if it's you know your kid for me it was student you know my previous students the kind of readers that I had I also think you should definitely read in your genre but I think you have to be really careful not to try to write like anyone else write like yourself you know don't think oh well you know this writer is so fantastic so I have to try to sound like that person because everyone has their own voice and you're not going to be able to sound like whoever that writer is that you admire so much.